Right, that's right. I'm gonna do what God has given me to do. I, I really thank God for all of the people who came out and supported me today. I told Dick and Reed not to come because he worked Friday night, all last Friday, all Friday night, got off, went to work Carolina game, went back to work last night at eleven o'clock, went to church this morning and came to hear me. Amen. That's and free. I told him not to come. He said, All right, I got this. <laughs> so, <laughs> but let's get into the word of God. Mm-hmm. This message right here, I've been preaching and teaching for a couple of months now. And um, I received a call and I told Reverend Baker about it on this week. Someone wants me to come in July to Forest City, Arkansas, and speak to their women. And I received another call to go to Dallas, Texas in May um, to speak the word. Um, you can sit because the scriptures, what I'm going to do, has already been read. But I got one more scripture that I want to add to it. And it's from Colossians 3 and 17. Whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do everything in the name of Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father, through him. And our topic today is mixed up priorities. Mm. Many of us are living with mixed up priorities. All right. What does the word priority mean? Nothing else is more important. When something is a priority, nothing else, no one else, 
No thing, nothing is more important. Let me ask you a question or two. What is your priority today? What is your priority? Is it your job? Is it your spouse? Is it your children? Is it preparing for your retirement? Getting that new house? That new car? Or trying to get a husband? Mm -hmm. What is your priority? Nothing is wrong with none of those things. But the Bible plainly tells us in Matthew 6 and 33, if you seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things shall be added unto you. Mm -hmm. You can't put God on the back burner and expect him to bless you with what you want when you're not making him the priority of your life. You can't expect God to give you that house when you are not his priority. Mm -hmm. You go to God when you're in trouble. You go to God when you need money. You go to God when you want him to bless you with something. He's on the back burner until you find yourself in a situation. Your priorities are so mixed up that you put everything and everybody before God. And he is the last one mm -hmm. that you go to. Mm -hmm. Mixed up priorities. Mm -hmm. No one, no relationship, your children, your spouse, none of them people can give you life. Mm. But God can. Yes. None of them people can heal your body, but God can. Yes. None of them people can give you promotion unless God ordained it to be so. Mm -hmm. Some of you have been waiting over and over and over and over for promotion. And you haven't gotten it. You know why? Because your priorities are not right. Mm. If your priorities are not right now, and you can't pay your tithes and offerings with the job you got, why should he promote you? Mm. Some of you have been praying to get married, like me. <laughs> but you know what? I can talk about me. So nobody can go out here and say, I'm talking about them. Mm -hmm. There was a time when I thought that I was ready to get married, but my priorities weren't right. And God knew that. And he knew that if he had blessed me with that man, God would have been there, and that man would have been there. Mm. Oh, I got to be honest. I wasn't ready for what I asked him for because my priorities was mixed up. And a lot of times we put ourselves in position mm -hmm. and we pretend and we think and we do things that we think is going to please somebody. And God is seeing all of that. Mm. That's what I did. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. I pretended over seal forms and mm. I walked the walk. Sister Betty Johnson. Mm. And I thought I had it all together. But not realizing that God saw where my priorities was. Mm. He knew where my priorities was. But you see, what I can tell you now, it does not matter where God blessed me with a husband or not. It does not matter if he give me somebody or not. If it's due, if he do, that's fine. But my number one priority now is God. Mm. That I'm at the age of 57 years old. And nothing, nobody, no thing mean any more to me than my relationship with God. Because you know what? When I was down, it was God that picked me up. Mm. When I had nothing, it was God that blessed me with something. Mm. When I was being persecuted, it was God that gave me strength to go through. When I was laying on the bed of affliction, it was God that healed me. He is my priority. My only priority. Mm. When I was laying in that hospital for 75 days, my sisters and my brothers and my son, they couldn't heal me. My friends couldn't heal me. They could pray for me, but they couldn't heal me. When I had that problem, yes, I did. Drinking alcohol, it wasn't the people that delivered me, but it was God. Mm -hmm. When I had that problem having money because I was spending on a dress and knew my life bill was due, mm -hmm. mixed up priorities. Mm -hmm. I had to go to Deacon Reed and say, I need some money. What you need money?
wouldn't fuck around because I bought a new dress when you knew your lap bill was in. And then he would give it to me, but he would fuss because my priority was all screwed up. All screwed up. And some of us in here today, priorities are screwed up. Amen. Mm. Amen. Mm. I mean, you go shopping and buy clothes and buy new cars and buy furniture for the house and you don't even pay your tithes and all. Get 
Ezekiel in a church in Charleston at a Bible study. Suppose one of them nine people wasn't right. Suppose they had hell in their heart. Suppose they had hate in their heart. This is something that we all need to search today. Because God forbid, for somebody to come in here now and do the same thing, would we be ready? Or would we have to ask God to forgive us for the hate that we have, for the grudges that we have? We don't know where death is. We don't know when God is going to call us home. But if we have our priority right and God be priority number one, then we wouldn't have no doubt. We would be, we would fear death because we know that we are ready when he called our name. Right. But we got so much mess going on in the church. Let me tell you something. I have stopped going visiting churches because from and this might go back to, but from mine to the ones I visit, I get I got single church people. Cause the church is supposed to be the hospital okay. where people come to get well. We are supposed to come here to get well, but we can't get well for getting contaminated by people in the church.
because you will not make a mockery out of God. Mm. My brothers and sisters, I give you, I'm giving you what God has given me. No more, no less. But each and every one of us in this church today need to revisit our priorities. And ask God, is my priorities right? Am I coming to church, God, to serve you, or am I coming to serve man? Am I coming to serve because I'm in leadership position, or am I coming, God, to worship you in spirit and truth? God, why is it that I do what I do? Why is it that I say what I say? God, I need you to be number one. I need you to be priority in my life. God, I need to put away all the grudges, all the hate, all the misunderstandings, all of what I think is right is not right. <laughs> I need to put them away. Yeah. And some of you need to put them away. Some of you need to ask God to forgive you for running people away from the church. Mm. Mm. All right. You get on the telephone, you talk about Cornerstone. You're still here, but you're talking about what's going on in Cornerstone. God is recording every conversation. God hears every conversation. The chairman of the deacon board may not know the conversation. Chairman of the trustee board may not know the conversation. The pastor may not know the conversation, but God knows it. And God will be in the that you think God don't go to real you. Hmm. It's time to stop playing church. It's time to get it together. If you are in a church and you can't obey leadership, you need to leave. Amen. Because the God plan to say, touch not my Lord and do my prophet no harm. Some of you are having problems, it's because of your mouth. Mm. It's because you have put your mouth on God's man. Mm. Now, does that mean that God's man is perfect? No. Does that mean that God's woman is perfect? No. But you are plainly instructed in the Bible not to do that. Mm -hmm. And you'll do it anyway. And then you can't wonder why your child won't come to church, why your child is on drugs, why your child is continuing to get in trouble. And then you can't wonder, you keep wondering, why you can't get what you want, you need to check out your priorities. You need to check out what's in your heart. You need to check it out and you need to ask God to forgive you. How in the world can you come to church on a Sunday morning and leave your kids home with me? We didn't have a car and my sister is here. And we had to walk that 45 minutes down that dirt road to be the Sunday school. And then a lot of times we had to stay out of church for another service. But now we won't even bring our kids to church. We ask them, do you want to come? Do you want to? We were that. We didn't have an option. We had to get up and we had to go. But now we let our children tell us what we want to do. How can you lay in the bed on Sunday morning for no reason if you're not sick? And it's the day that we're supposed to come and worship God in spirit and in truth. And then you get up, and then you go to the mall, mm -hmm. you go out to eat, you do whatever you want to do. Your priorities are so screwed up. It's mixed up. God should be number one. Number one. Those folks down there at the University of South Carolina, they go down there and they tell them all day, all day long. That's what they want to do, and then go to the football game. And then we don't want to be in church for two hours. Mm -hmm. We keep looking at the clock. Mm -hmm. What? They go eat, and go home, and lay down and go to sleep. And we don't even want to give God two hours. And then we want him to give us in a minute. Mm. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. we, need to, we need to revisit this thing that we say we got, and we really don't have. We need to revisit. Mm -hmm.
Jesus to do surgery on my heart. Stay right here, stay right here. Making my heart so messed up with hate, with grudges. Many of us have unforgiveness in our hearts. Many of us, dear God, right now in the name of Jesus, don't know you. Come to church Sunday after Sunday. Do routine duties, but don't have a personal relationship with you. Help us, God, to make you priority. Help us, God, to make you number one. Help us, God, to do those things that you call us to do. Help us, God, not to look to the left or to the right, right. but to stay focused on you. And God, if we stay focused on you, we know everything will be all right. Yes, we will have some bumps. And yes, we will have some bruises. But God, you will bring us out every time because our priority is you. So God, we thank you right now. We thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for Brother Baker, God. Thank you that you will keep him. Thank you that you will protect him. Thank you, dear God, that you will continue to use him. And thank you, God, that you will surround him with people that will help him and not hurt him. God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the relationship that me and the chairman of the deacons have, God. That they can talk about things and they can work together. And keep Deacon Wilson strong, God, that he may continue to do those things, God, that you have called him to do. And not just Deacon Wilson, but all of the deacons and the deaconesses and the trustees and the missionaries and choir members and the ushers and everybody in the church, God, help us all to realize that you should be our only priority. The priority, seeing that souls are saved, souls are delivered, people are set free. Help us this day, God. We commit this prayer to you, knowing, God, that you ain't just heard the prayer. Yes. You've already begun to work. Yes. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.